Hey everyone, Flying Dutchie here and welcome to Victoria Free. We are going to play in the new and big upgrade, the version 1.5. This is the seventh iteration already. And we are also having the new DLC enabled, the Clutters of the South. We are not going to play in that region though, because everyone is going to play there. I am going to play as Russia. And I'm going to play this because it's one of the greater powers I didn't play at yet. And it will be a very good uh, way to show off everything, just with a big power uh, when we are already strong. So I did test a little bit already. And we are going to start a, a new game, of course. We will start a sandbox game. I have already all done all the objectives. I know how it works. Uh, we don't have to activate Iron Man mode for achievement, so I'm not going to do this. And we are going to jump into a game as Russia. And we are going to try to become an egalitarian society with very industrialized states where everyone is accepted and where religion doesn't do uh, mean anything. So that is the complete opposite at the start of the game because we have a Tsar uh, who, is a, who is the leader, Nikolai Romanov. And uh, yeah, let's just go into the game and then we will talk about all the things that we need to talk about. Now the first thing that I will look for is the achievements that we are going for in this run. There will be a couple of achievements. Um, of course we can maybe get this one, Excel Agitator with 100 popularity, but not sure if that's going to happen. I will try to go for the reading campaign, I don't have that one yet. Uh, we start with lesson 20 literacy, let's go to tr and try to go to 95. Uh, we need 3 companies at max prosperity at the same time, we will take a look at companies later. And the main objective at the start will be the Great Game, as Russia owned the entire Central Asia region. Now the Central Asia region is all of this. We do own a lot of things already, but there are a couple of counties we can still vassalize or conquer. Uh, and we need to take one, two, three, four states from uh, Xing. So we will go to war with them at some point. Uh, so that are the achievements. Now let's take a look at our polit uh, political situation. We are at Sardom, uh, which gives us a, a very righteous government, which is good for loyalists and less enactment time. So it's not always a bad thing, of course. Uh, but my Tsar is not popular. He likes to be a traditionalist, which means that uh, we have state religion and legal guardianship, something he would really like. And when we take a look at our government over here, you can see that the Gentry Assembly is having 54% clout, which is insane they are just completely in power no one is, uh, has a saying in our country we have served them uh, so people are working for the landowners and that's their whole purpose they don't have their own lives and what I can do at the start is reform the government and put the armed forces and the orthodox church in as well that way we still have a very righteous government and we can maybe do some more law changes. So I will do this at the start of the game. Uh, let's take a look at our laws. So we are a monarchy. We have an, uh, we are an autocracy. One guy is ruling the country, the Tsar. Uh, we have national supremacy. State religion, hereditary bureau bureaucrats. We want to get rid of all of these, but we can only get rid of this when the gently assembly is no longer in power. That is going to become very difficult and I think that will be a bloodbath but let's see how that goes uh, we have peasant levies at the start of the game which also makes the gentry assembly very strong so we could try to focus on getting this out of the way but going to professional army is going to be very difficult but we will, might get there at some point uh, we have no home affairs we could go to the national guard we have a good chance to, to uh, get this one um, but I don't think I'm going to focus on that one at the moment. Uh, we start with traditionalism, which is horrible. Um, it gives uh, less taxation capacity, um, no investment pool. Uh, we cannot get other taxation laws. And also important is that we have minus 15% market access price impact, the MAPI. Uh, that is a modifier that makes it that states that don't produce anything will have a harder time to get it. For example, if I make uh, iron in the state and the state that is next to it does not make iron, but it needs iron for tools, 
that it will be uh, having a very high price compared to my uh, global market price because there is no access in the state itself to iron. So we really want to focus on local pr production change because that is uh, going to make things a lot uh, cheaper and more profitable. Um, so we are going to look at that. So yeah, we want to get all of, rid of that, but that's going to be difficult because the gentry assembly likes it. Uh, we have mercantilism, we have land-based taxation. Uh, we would go to per capita, per capita taxation when we can, but once again, gentry assembly serve them, which gives a huge boost to the gentry assembly. Uh, we cannot get rid of it because of the gentry assembly. Uh, I can maybe get uh, schools over here. No, we cannot because we have served them. So we cannot get schools. That is how bad it is. Uh, we could get charity hospitals. That is possible. We will get less uh, mortality. So that could be a first thing to do. Um, we have censorship. We have no rights. Child labor is allowed. We do have propertied women instead of legal guardianship. So that is nice. We have no migration control, but we do not have slavery. So that is at least something. Now, we also have no police. And I think we're going for the dedicated police force. Uh, local police force is a little bit better, but it also makes the gently assembly more powerful. And we don't want that. So we're going to dedicated police force, which gives some minus 15% state penalties from turmoil and less radicals from standard of living decreases. And uh, the gently assembly also like this change. So gonna start with that one it should not be uh, very hard to do now technology wise I think we are going to start with the stock exchange because it gives the 10% mappy impact so uh, states that don't have access in their own state to a good will have a little bit of an easier time to get it from the global market but the prices are going to go a little bit further down so we'll start with the stock exchange for our technology now, for the construction, we are going immediately to iron frame buildings. It will just give us more construction. Yes, it's going to cost us more tools and iron, but we will have that covered hopefully anytime soon. And we are going to build more construction uh, sectors. I'm going to build four more and I will build them in Moscow. And why do I build them in Moscow and not somewhere else? It's very simple. Moscow is able to make iron and coal. And they also make tools. So for the local prices of tools and iron in Moscow, uh, it will be cheaper. So if I build four of these and we zoom in on Moscow, we go to the buildings tab here. You can see that we have iron mines and we have logging camps. And when we go to our construction sector, you can see that we need tools, fabric, wood and iron. So the logging camps are over here making cheap wood. We will make more iron mines so we have cheaper iron and we are going to make more tooling workshops who also need wood and iron. So together with the tooling workshop, locking camps, iron, man, uh, iron mines and construction sectors, we will have a very cheap construction uh, industry and that is what I'm going to focus on at the start. So let's get that uh, build over there. Now we have to spend our influence points. I will just uh, improve relations with the major powers around us, so Great Britain. Austria and let's see if we can do Xing as well For now, I think we want to keep Xing on our side And when we take a look at our authority, we are suppressing the intelligentsia at the moment So we really want to change that. So let's go to our outliner here and put the interest groups in And I will stop suppressing the intelligentsia and I'm gonna bolster them I want them to get more attraction and the same goes for the industrialists. So I'm gonna bolster these two groups I cannot suppress the Gentry Assembly because they are in the government. Uh, I could go and improve with the armed forces, but I don't really care. And maybe we should... Oh yeah, they are also in the government, so we cannot suppress the Orthodox Church. But that's fine. Just going to keep them uh, like this. So we have some points available. Um, I will go to the budget screen here and maybe get some more uh, consumption tax on services. Not on clothes or grain, because my poor people need those. But they don't really need services, so... I'm going to put some over here, maybe even on luxury furniture as well. And I'm going to keep the 200 to maybe uh, do some state edicts. Now, I think it's time to uh, unpause the, the game here. Uh, hopefully my 
recording can hold this because I am recording on 4040p and sometimes it gets a bit choppy so hopefully I will not get a choppy uh, video uh, output here it seems to go all right what is this Xing wants a trade agreement I guess I will accept this to keep my relations with Xing up so that they won't uh, interfere with my uh, war efforts over here so let's take a look at our uh, situation we have a couple of things that we need to take care of the first thing is the uh, formation organization for a flotilla. So let's take a look at this. Apparently we have one single ship with no general somewhere. Now if we don't want this ship over here, I'm going to send it to another fleet. We can do it with this button. Uh, when we take a look at our Baltic fleet, we can see that we have 25 heavy ships and 16 light ships. Uh, that is also a problem. You never want more heavy ships than light ship because then you get your organization goes down. So at least we can solve the problem with one ship. But yes, we have to make more ships and that is also uh, these things over here. The Baltic fleet is having too many capital ships which lowers the organization. So we want to build more light ships uh, before we are really going to use all of this. And yes, you can have multiple commanders now per fleet. Um, what is this thing? Yeah, over here we have uh, 19 light ships and 12 heavy ships. That is in the Black Sea. And that is, we get a penalty because we don't have enough command limit. So we want more commanders. Now I can of course get a new commander. And I think I will because we just found a uh, very experienced naval commander. I love those. They give really good bonuses. So let's get that one in. The armed forces also get more clouds this way. And that will solve the problem here with the uh, command uh, limit. That we only have one thing over here now. Now we do have a, a problem with iron. We are going to focus on this uh, later. I'm first going to focus on the standard of living problems. Now in Dagestan, 35% of the pops are below a minimum expected standard of living. Now first of all, they are an unincorporated state. So their uh, minimum expected standard of living is already lower with minus 33%. But as you can see, they also have lower market access price impact. They have minus 10. And I think we can see it over here. They only have 50% market access. So everything that Dagestan doesn't produce and they need to take from the Russian market will be very expensive. And you can see that at the local prices over here. Uh, let's have a look here, the balance. For example, we are having a tea plantation here and we only consume one, which makes the tea super cheap. Right? Uh, but grain over here, we are making 40 from our subsistence farms, from the peasants, but we want 61. So the local price is very expensive. And they cannot really get this from the global market. The global market the price is uh, very low as you can see here. The Russian market is 16.7. 16% lower than the base price. But Dagestan cannot get this because of the market, uh, the, the mappy. So we should build some farms over here. One, to give the people that are not having a good job uh, maybe more wages. And two, make the price of grain lower here so that people can actually buy it. Because when we take a look at our population we can see that the laborers are the problem. The peasants are also struggling, but they are very far over what they need. I think they only need 2.5 or something. They have six, so they are struggling, but they are fine. They stay alive, and that is the only thing we care about at this point in the game. But the laborers are starving. They are dying. Why are they dying? Well, 45,000. North Caucasians, who are discriminated by the way, so that is not good. And Sunni is also discriminated, so they are very discriminated. Uh, they are unemployed. They have no job at the moment. The ones that are working at the tea plantation are also starving. Because they don't make enough money here, I think. And we also have uh, more unemployed here as well. The ones that are working on the livestock ranges also don't make enough money. Now my own Russian... Orthodox people are also starving. So the wheat farms in Dagestan are really not making enough money. And that's also because they are making sugar that is 
not really needed over here, so maybe we should maintain a single crop. The productivity already went up a little bit here. But that could make a difference. Uh, what else do I want to build here to give my laborers a profitable job? Well, tea is already very cheap here. Yes, it does give a somewhat wage, but it's yes, they are starving, so it's not good enough over there. Maybe we should build a couple of tobacco plantations. But the thing is, will there be demand in Dagestan for tobacco? Right? Here, yeah, tobacco. One pop is consuming tobacco. That could be a very bad thing to build. What about wine? Three pops like wine over here. But you make 20. And that is how we need to solve the problems. It's going to be very difficult. Um, I think that getting a wheat farm, at least in these states, where we have low standard, is going to help. So we will build one in Dagestan. I will do the same in East, Car uh, East Karelia over here. Also going to build a farm there. And also in Crimea. Build a wheat farm over there. Uh, because then they have also lower access to their own grain. It should also help. So let's do all of these things. Uh, hopefully this this uh, percentage will go down a bit. Then we can take care of the expensive government goods here. Now we are busy with the organization stuff. So we don't have to do anything else at this point I think. I think we can, we can just let the game run. Um... Now we do have some bureaucracy, but when we get the dedicated police force, we will get our first institution. Which costs 427, so we really don't want to spend too much bureaucracy. Uh, but there might be a state we can incorporate. You're already incorporated. What is the incorporated minimum expected? Uh, wait. Yeah, 4.5. So if I want to make more states incorporated, for example, Saratov is not incorporated. Is that going to go well? Or are, is everyone going to be angry then? I mean, we have a couple of laborers that will be below the average, but that is it. That's a lot of laborers, by the way. In the iron mines. The iron mines are not profitable enough in Saratov. And that's because their tools are expensive and they cannot get the tools from the Russian market as you can see here. Because Saratov is 48% and the Russian market is 27%. All thanks to the Mappy. So yeah, you actually want to build all these things in your states so that you get those chains. So we might even build a, uh, a tooling workshop here in Saratov. And also a logging camp. And then we will integrate it. So right now we will not integrate it. And that is how we need to look at everything. It's going to be very interesting and see how that goes. I'm going to lower my taxation a bit here. We are making a lot of money. At this point in the game. And I think it's worth it. To uh, keep my people a bit happier. So we get more loyalists. Uh, we have a trade route that is not active. So we will cancel that one. Let's take a look at our trade routes here. We're importing some metal wars from Denmark. We're importing dyes. Import tea. Porcelain. Luxury clothes. Luxury furniture. Those things are really good because we don't make that ourselves at the moment. We're importing sugar. We also import tools. We are exporting iron. I will stop that immediately. Uh, liquor. It's fine, I guess. Are we exporting cloth? We don't have to import cloth, right? Or fabric. Well, it's, it's nice if it's cheap, actually. Um, yeah, let's keep it cheap. 
And silk, we are importing some silk from uh, Great Ching, which means that I could change my textile industries and make some luxury clothing myself. For example, in Moscow. Oh, we are already doing this in Moscow. The game is already making some luxury clothes. Yeah. If you live in Minsk, you have uh, cheap luxury clothes, but in the rest of Russia, you don't. Or at least in some of the estates. And what about the furniture? We are making some luxury furniture as well in Moscow. Okay, that's normal prices. I guess I'm not going to change anything here. Now the tooling workshop, I really would love to go to uh, wrought iron tools here. I think I will. Let's make more tools. The shipyards, we have uh, the shipyards for uh, the clippers. And we have military shipyards now for the Mano Wars. The Mano Wars are cheap in Rostov, but on the Russian market it is normal. So where you build your military shipyards, you want to make your, your ships, your naval bases, because you will have cheap inputs. So when we are going to fix our problem here with the uh, the fleet, we should do that over there. Uh, is there anything else over here? Artillery is a little bit expensive, but we only have a little bit. Yeah, we just need to work on the tools and the iron. Okay, we are building a textile mill in Gerson. Uh, do we have fabric here? Yes, we do. So that's going to be a very good textile mill. Um, but do we also want to use the silk and make luxury clothes? Maybe, actually. I think it's fine to build both over there. Alright. Discord with the Orthodox Church. I think it's fine to get the Orthodox Church less pop interaction. Or I will go with this one and get the Orthodox Church minus 15 and the Armed Force plus 10. Absolutely. These uh, events are really good to shape your political groups a little bit. In my opinion. Now, are we going to speed 5? Can my game hold this? Looks like the answer is yes for now. So I'm going to build a couple of these farms in the uh, states where we had the problem. So... One of the states is now out of the list, so that is good. And I think it's time to start working on Moscow. And make sure that our iron price is going to be very cheap. So, the local cons is that the local consumption? Wow. We need so many iron mines here. Holy shit. This will still not be enough. We need the atmospheric engine. And then 10 will be enough actually. So let's go build 10 iron mines here. And then some coal mines. And then we can switch this to the atmospheric engine pump over there. It's going to cost us more time to take a look at these states separately. If you want to uh, complete everything. Uh, okay, the artillery, tools, iron, one of the uh, pop-ups is gone. Now we only have the problem in Dagestan. Is this getting built in Dagestan? No. Crimea. So Dagestan is a bit of a problem. It's all the laborers that are starving out of here. It's so horrible. How are we going to stop this? It's going to be difficult. I mean, I can build a tobacco plantation. Maybe that will help. So, now first we're going to get our iron problem solved here in Moscow. Uh, yes, we need to watch out for the uh, infrastructure. But we can still use some of our edicts. I can still do road maintenance. Thank you. 
I don't really like to get those temporarily bonus. It it just messes up everything. Oh, and sorry about the uh, the lagging. Uh, apparently, I need to lower the uh, the settings of my recordings. Okay, I just need to pause the uh, the recording sometimes. That would solve the problem, it seems. But yeah, after this episode, I will go back to 1080p because uh, my my uh, graphics card, my my uh, 3070, cannot really handle it. So. This will be the only episode in 4040p, and then we will go back to uh, 1080. That should give not any problems at all. But uh, yeah, it's getting uh, pretty laggy, so... Sorry about that. And there we go, guys. We have dedicated police force. So, uh, less state penalties. That is really, uh, really good for us, I think. Let's take a look over here. Minus 15%. It is costing us a lot of uh, bureaucracy. That's uh, something we cannot change, so we will have to just uh, stick with it. Uh, let's see, the armed forces are not at the next level. Would love them to be at the next level. Then we get uh, more offense and defense, and then we can go and take the, the people down in the south. Okay, I decided to end this episode here because I get the lag problems, otherwise it will look very uh, terrible for you guys. So, it will be a smaller first episode. Make sure to like and subscribe and maybe join the Discord. You can find the links in the description. And then in the next episode we are going to war with, uh, I guess, these three countries over here and make them my protectorate. Um, what we also can do is annex these countries, but they are having all these people over here. That are discriminated. So we will only discriminate these people at the moment. So maybe you should just keep them as a protectorate or something. And uh, yeah, hopefully you're going to enjoy this. Uh, we'll also let's take a look at the companies next uh, episode. So that we can maybe focus on uh, getting one company at the start of the game. And then I hopefully see you at the next episode. Bye bye.